that we want. All right. Hopefully, everyone can see my screen. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, do you actually do? Well, whatever. Uh, right, so the agenda, uh, as Chris is not here, I'll try to do my best and hopefully just, you know, raise your hand if, you know, I miss something or if I'm not clear enough. Today we're going to have one demo uh, around PCF from, uh, from you guys, Karen and, and Ramesh. And then we'll have a quick landscape and white paper update. I'm not sure there is, there is much there, but let's, let's keep the discussion going. I think uh, Chris was meant to do a quick recap of, of Chaos Conf. Hopefully there will be someone who can, you know, uh, you know, tell us all about the, the conference. Yeah, uh, I was there. Great, so probably you'll fill the role, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, right, so let's get started. I think we are rolling for the demo, guys. So I'll, uh, I'll leave you, you know, share your screen. I think that's probably best. Sure. Um... I stop sharing. Wow. Is there any button here to yeah. share? I think on Zoom, do you have a green share screen at the bottom? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, there you go. And you pick up, you know, whatever. Yeah. It works. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Ramesh, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Karun. Good morning, folks. Uh, my name is Ramesh. I'm the uh, senior engineering manager for uh, the platform engineering team at T-Mobile. First off, thank you for giving us an opportunity to present here. Very excited to know that there's a community around this and uh, you know we can tap into like uh, extensive community network to also get help on what we're trying to do at T-Mobile. Right? Uh, but quick background on me, I've been with T-Mobile for 10 months. Um, my team owns the container strategy for T-Mobile. And uh, Karun is uh, one of the brilliant engineers we have on the team. So Karun, do you want to introduce yourself for the question? Yes. Um, so uh, my name is Karun Chanuri, and uh, I'm senior software engineer uh, working at T-Mobile. Uh, I joined this team uh, in March uh, 2018, so I'm fairly new to T-Mobile. Before that, I was with uh, Huawei as a cloud security engineer for them. Um, I have about uh, 13 years of experience in the field of uh, information security uh, and enterprise security. So. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much so. Here at T-Mobile, uh, we we take care of uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry operations and DevOps kind of a role, and uh, also uh, we have uh, Kubernetes, uh, you know, in-house cluster. These two come under Ramesh. Okay, so let's get started. I know uh, some folks are excited to see the demo and what we're trying to talk about, right? So I'll gradually take you through the journey. Uh, Karun, you want to go to the next slide, please? Um, yeah. So. Um, one of the things that uh, you know I'd like to start off with is uh, Joker's on our, uh, you know analogy on how uh, he interprets chaos in this movie Dark Knight, and uh, we kind of spoke about that at our conference at Spring One, and uh, Joker calls it as a fair act, which is um, every time you disturb the harmony of uh, systems, good things will come out of it, right? So that and that analogy has started uh, uh, kind of like um, started my thinking also, which is uh, my team builds a lot of these capabilities on top of like a massive infrastructure and behind the scenes there's compute network and storage and uh, things will always go wrong, right? So I'll get to the actual problem statement, but I always like to start off any presentation with who we are, what we do, um, what are the services we provide in the stack and uh, kind of drive you towards the problem statement and then hand it over to Karun. So our vision today at T-Mobile is to deliver simple, secure, scalable platform services that are uh, infrastructure and platform agnostic. Um, and uh, we do this with relentless focus on customer obsession because we are catered to the needs of an internal engineering community with over 800 plus active users on our platform. Uh, and on the right side, you're seeing the evolution of the asset service model. Uh, you might have seen different variations of this, but um, we're one of the biggest partners of our infrastructure team who is also moving towards more of uh, uh, an automation model with one-click access uh, to uh, compute network and storage level resources. But then we're their biggest customers and we're extending that portfolio to even give better uh, capabilities. Uh, one of the capabilities at the container as a service matrix is uh, op uh, you know, offering for Kubernetes so people can bring their own containers 
and then a platform as a service abstraction where people can just uh, give us their code, you know, we'll go run it uh, within our uh, abstraction layer and they don't have to worry about other capabilities, right? It's like a self-driving car. We give them the bells and whistles of operating their code at scale. Um, and at the same time, you know, uh, they get the best experience in terms of like dealing with live customer issues, right? So depending upon the kind of abstraction you choose, different um, different flavors comes in. Uh, so that's really what my team does in a nutshell. Let's move on to the next slide, Kuru. Um So one of the things uh, that folks have asked me is, okay, so what's the big deal? Every company is doing this. Um, you know, what what's really uh, in in my portfolio, which is driving the need for chaos engineering, right? I'll, I'll focus on the fact that we're building our services on top of on-prem infrastructure today, that is compute network and storage. Um, we've gotten the business used to agility already in the last two years, uh, roughly 4,000 applications, 500 active users per day. We're at 31,000 containers across development and prod. They're a production for me, even though it's development environments. Um, uh, business has gotten used to the agility, which is faster applications, faster mean time to respond and resolve. Uh, the last iPhone launch event saw a max peak of like 16,000 requests per second, uh, right at the minute iPhone launch was launched, right? And then since then, it has been trending around an average of 14,000. Hang on there, Tarun. Um, I'll tell you when to move on to the next slide, please. Um, so, and then we're moving towards the feature, which is like, you know, where we want to extend our capabilities around simplicity, security, and scalability. We are trying to deliver net new capabilities on uh, uh, the function as a service and also exploring new capabilities at the platform as a service layer. So a lot of work that is already being planned in terms of agility, resiliency, and enhancement, all of which entails infrastructure in the in the in the background. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so a um, bit of the uh, explanation of the problem statement a little more. Um, have folks here on the call seen this before? Um, like the blue and the black dots, anybody? Okay, so um, let's actually <laughs> go through the animation here, Karun. Um, so basically, uh, what you see here is what's called as a Death Star diagram, and uh, it's uh, a representation of uh, uh, the kind of the ecosystem your microservices deal, uh, you know, uh, live in, and the kind of interaction that they have with dependent services. Um, the snapshot on the left is from Amazon from 2010, and then Netflix Death Star diagram is the blue version, and then uh, ours looks a little more less chaotic, but we're getting there in terms of you know what the chaos is going to look like in the future. So the key message here is, you know, we as engineers, we write services. The services have a backend systems they interact with. And obviously when systems fail, um, you know, things, uh, your customer is gonna take the, the, the impact in terms of like uh, uh, any customer impacting events. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is like, as, as in terms of our digital transformation initiative, we're trying to think about failure in a different way and try to embrace failure because we know failure is inevitable. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so, and I actually started off with this problem statement with Karun, um, and uh, a couple of months ago, we, we wanted to look at like two kinds of failures. Obviously, there is the platform level failures that I care about because I run the platform. Uh, and what I mean here is, what are the kinds of things that could go wrong with my platform? What are the assumptions engineers make when they build services on, uh, on, on top of an infrastructure, right? Think about things like about a network being homogeneous, we have infinite bandwidth, um, uh, the fact that we have infinite compute resources, all of these assumptions need to be validated because when you fail to validate it, is when problems start happening. And uh, you know you could get into a disaster scenario like these two guys on the left side, which is uh, not our data center, but uh, somebody else's data center. The fact here is, you know, our data center is in an earth earthquake-prone zone. Um, you know, and anything could ha happen here. We have active volcanoes in this region, so um, we're trying to be cognizant about the fact that okay, if uh, things fail. Um, how our system is going to react? How can T-Mobile continue its business on? Because a lot of the business critical applications run on this platform. Right? And then there is the containers that are running within the platform. Containers have applications, and it's not just one target application, right? There's several applications, so you want to launch specific targeted attacks on containers um, and just affect that one application under context, right? Or the dependent service it interacts with. Um, so that's a fairly significant problem on its own because uh, you know because of the way PCF PCF is built and because of the way containers work on PCF. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, so this is where Karun, you know, I think you should hand off um, and and talk through your journey, Karun. Sure. So. Um, so what the so looking at the problem statement, we have two problems there. One is uh, the platform level attacks, and the other one is the uh, applications running on the platform. You know, uh, attacking the applications that are running on the platform. 
So we started exploring, uh, you know, are there any existing tools uh, because we uh, didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So we started uh, with an open source solution called Chaos Lemur. Um, and, uh, but all we could see uh, make it work uh, with the Chaos Lemur is uh, killing of the virtual machines. Uh, but in fact, uh, at the platform level, we wanted to achieve killing virtual machines, killing a process, introducing latency into the system, and uh, introducing memory and CPU hog, right? So uh, all these come under the infrastructure level attacks, but uh, Chaos Lemur for us uh, was like more like a Chaos Monkey. It can only go and then, you know, uh, turn off uh, a random virtual machine, which is uh, definitely not something that we are looking for. We're looking for a more um, uh, bigger solution. So we started looking at Gremlin as one of the commercial offerings as well. And uh, we see here, uh, the the version that we evaluated with the Gremlin, it's a pretty very uh, very powerful um, you know tool. Uh, I should I must say because uh, uh, it comes with a, a very neat uh, UI and uh, there there was uh, initial uh, um, uh, thinking whether. The Gremlin would work on the PCF environment or not, but uh, we made it work and uh, it seemed to uh, fairly work, uh, you know, perform the operations at the infrastructure level, like killing of virtual machines, killing of process, introducing latency and memory hog. But again, the version that we evaluated doesn't have the application knowledge, uh, which seemed to be the case that, you know, the Gremlin is working on it and um, uh, even in the recent um, 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 uh, uh, intro from their, uh, 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 from, from their CEO, Mr. Colton, I think uh, it seemed to be coming up and uh, they have added this capability in the latest release of Gremlin, uh, which we have never uh, looked at yet, right? So, but uh, again, Gremlin comes with the cost and uh, we are also very conscious about the cost that is involved, uh, you know, uh, and running on the infrastructure. So we looked at turbulence as another alternative and uh, it's an open source. Uh, uh, as you can see, it performs fairly, you know, and it's very native to the Cloud Foundry as well, like, you know, which is uh, pretty much we were looking for. Any Bosch hosted virtual machines can be um, done with the chaos engineering attacks or failure injection attacks can be performed on the Bosch hosted environment. Um, performing killing virtual machines process and introducing latency and CPU memory hog. But again, it lacks application knowledge, right? So, so for us, uh, as I said, like, you know, as Ramesh explained, those are the two problem statements, like infrastructure level chaos engineering attack or the platform level chaos engineering attack and the application level at attack, right? So uh, here is what uh, we looked at uh, chaos toolkit as a framework. It basically orchestrates uh, multiple other, uh, so, uh, you know, solutions like Gremlin and Turbulence as uh, dri drivers. So what we built is we built two drivers there. One is uh, a driver for the Turbulence itself and then another custom homegrown build, uh, driver that's built from the scratch, uh, which has application knowledge. So it can go and then figure out, discover where your application is running within the cluster. So if I have a cluster of 2000 nodes, in that 2000 nodes, um, this driver can go and figure out your application is running on those particular nodes. It can also figure out what service dependencies this application has. So if it is dependent on MySQL database, it can go and randomly kill the MySQL database uh, instance and see how your application behaves. So these are the two drivers uh, that would be demoed today. And um, let me, before I jump into the, um, you know, the demo, uh, let me explain more clearly what exactly that we are talking about here on simulating failures on the platform level, right? You can see the component diagram for the PCF, the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. There are various components here. Each component could be a virtual machine or multiple uh, boxes here could be processes running inside a virtual machine. So failure can happen. There is a lot of uh, interaction happening. So it is so obvious that, you know, failure can randomly happen at one point, uh, at any point and see that, you know, uh, it might eventually um, lead to the disaster as well, right? So for example, let's take a simple example here, the rep process going down. So what happens is the rep process running inside the Diego cell is responsible for managing the life cycle of the containers running in it. So DGOSIL is like a worker node in Kubernetes. So if the rep process goes down in that node, there is no way to manage the life cycle. So it's one good way to simulate an attack via turbulence and the driver that we uh, spoke about. And another attack is um, think of uh, applications running in your cluster. Um, uh, let's say a set of apps have auto scaling enabled, let, for, uh, which means uh, it, based on the load or the uh, CPU stress or the HTTP latency, the app's gonna 
scale up and scale down um, um, in, in terms of the instances. So for that, um, the autoscaler as a service depends on cloud controller. So what happens when there is a huge traffic to the app and then uh, the cloud controller goes down? So the and then uh, what happens uh, is this app going to scale up or scale down you know those kind of failure injection tests that can seamlessly be performed uh, via the driver that uh, we are talking about here so how we perform this uh, this is a turbulence uh, turbulence comes with api server and the agent uh, the agent goes and sits in each of the virtual machines in your cluster and then listening to your api server which is a control plane so we use ctk and initiate few attacks which goes through the API server and then agents fulfill that request. So all the ones which are highlighted here, like pausing a process. So some of the attacks that we can perform is killing a VM, killing a process, pausing a process. So that would be one of the demo scenarios here. Introducing a stress into the system uh, by increasing this, uh, by introducing like CPU and memory hog, corrupting a disk associated to uh, you know a virtual machine, right? And uh, network delays limiting the bandwidth, reordering of the packets. What happens if the packets are reordered? How is your system going to behave? How is your platform going to uh, react? Firewalls, attacking on the firewalls at the platform level, targeted level blockings, like you know, you can go and then perform you know, IP table rule uh, level failures as well. Shutdown, block DNS, and duplication of packets. So these are some of the features uh, that come with the turbulence and highlighted ones are the ones that we have added and uh, contributed back to the open source. So let me uh, show you the first uh, demo uh, for this. Uh, I would like to run the video from my desktop. So uh, just give me a second here. Are you able to see my screen now or are you still seeing the presentation? Presentation indeed. Oh, okay. I think I have to share this particular window then. Okay, so. Yep. Yes. It's okay now. Yeah. So um, this is a demo I was talking about. Um, um, so what we will do here is uh, we are going to demonstrate how chaos toolkit has been used uh, as a driver uh, and then uh, a, a turbulence driver has been added uh, what it does is like you know it demonstrates two scenarios the first scenario is pausing a process so here uh, for this we are going to pause ssh process um, what happens if an if an ssh process has been paused uh, to the Diego cell right and then uh, the other one is killing a particular vm itself like uh, killing a Diego cell what happens to the containers running in that right so a very short video and it's there on the YouTube as well. Uh, the reason why I run it here is uh, it has better quality and uh, uh, the zoom in effect. So first I go in here, uh, pause process.json. This is my experiment file in Chaos Toolkit with title and descriptions here with uh, some steady state hypothesis and configuration information that I'm supposed to pass as a part of experiment. So these can be, um, again, uh, can be enhanced like, you know, instead of putting in username and password here, it can, it can come from the vault as well. Um, so what I'm doing here is, uh, this is a one box environment called Bosch Lite, which um, uh, gives you uh, a cloud foundry running in one laptop. And uh, you can see in the turbulence deployment, virtual machines, you can see the API server, turbulence API server is running there. As I said, like, you know, there's a turbulence API server and turbulence agent running in each virtual machine. So, that's what the configuration we provided in the experiment. And then uh, the method here is, uh, um, is to attack pause process SSH for one minute. So we are going to pause SSH process for one minute on deployment CF and group Diego cell limit to one, which can be any Diego cell. So right now in this environment, I have only one uh, Diego cell since it's a one box environment, but we tested this successfully on the staging environment with about hundreds of VMs there. So there's only one VM, VM here, Digo cell. Let's perform SSH operation on the Digo cell. As you can see, it's pretty responsive, right? It's very quick. And then now um, I go and perform a failure injection test uh, using Chaos Toolkit uh, by running this experiment, pause process.json. Um, so these are some verbos uh, running the experiment and uh, steady state hypothesis has been met as well. And then uh, experiment ended which status has completed. 
now let's try to do an SSH into the same Digo cell. There's a pause, like, you know, for, and it, it's paused. So for about 60 minutes, and we can go and check the UI as well. There's a UI aspect of turbulence. It is saying the pause process is in progress and it will continue to, you know, spin up till for like about one minute. So after about a minute, you will see the lock is released, right? So um, you can try again to do an SSH and it's again, you know, very responsive after one minute, right? So because there is no lock on that SSH. So since we could do it for SSH process, you can do it for anything like, you know, you can do it for the rep process or anything. Second scenario is killing a Digo cell, uh, any Digo cell, like again, there's an experiment file for this separate one. Um, we go with the standard definition uh, experiment file for now. Um, Steady state hypothesis is actually empty for now. Like, you know, uh, we are not doing much, but we can do, we can add some probes there. Uh, method is uh, to attack and kill a Digo cell, which is running in the deployment CF and limit to one. So you kill one Digo cell for that matter. So any Digo cell. And then I'm going to run this experiment, kill Digo cell, validating hypothesis and uh, experiment ended with complete status completed. So as you could see, there is uh, the Digo cell running in this. Now let's go and then uh, print the VMs. Clearly there's no Digo cell here, right? So it's killed, right? So what happens to the applications running in that Digo cell or containers running in there, right? So that's an, another way of looking at things. So if so again, the UI shows that the attack has been successfully completed and that's the reason it is in green color. And then uh, since I, as I said, it's a Bosch hosted uh, environment, uh, the Bosch will go and then, you know, um, get the, bring back the Digo cell again. So, so after a certain interval of time, you could see that the Digo cell is back because the Bosch has created it again, right? But so it, in the same, in that scenario, Bosch also made sure uh, the apps are scheduled back again. So that's my first uh, demo. Uh, uh, let me go back to my presentation slide deck. So this is again, um, so that's the first half of the problem statement. How do you perform the platform level? chaos engineering attacks is via turbulence and uh, chaos toolkit driver for the turbulence. So the next half of the problem statement, which is crucial for us is uh, um, application level chaos engineering because um, we have about 4,000 applications running on our platform. Um, it's not a single, we are not a single application company, right? Wherein you just uh, attack an application and uh, all the components of that application and see what happens. Right, it's not that we have different different uh, teams building different stuff every day, and uh, about four thousand applications. Not not at all independent. They are pretty independent and not interdependent applications, right? So we don't want to randomly go and then uh, kill a ego cell. It would impact multiple teams within uh, T-Mobile, and uh, that's that's a big problem for us. We have we wanted to make a very conscious level attacks, like in you know, a very targeted attacks, in a way that okay, specific attack, specific application uh, is targeted for the chaos engineering. What would happen? How would you know uh, without disturbing other applications running on the same Digo cell? So, uh, do you want to talk about this, Ramesh, uh, in the ops world, or should I go ahead? So, I think uh, Ramesh. Karun, sorry, I was speaking, Karun. I was on mute. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah. yeah. So, in our ops world, we deal with an open support model where we get a number of different questions. Uh, and I want to talk about a few of our favorite, uh, favorite questions as to how we can actually not just be enablers, but also be guardians, right? Which is not necessarily just rely on best intentions, but provide tools and capabilities that will also kind of like help with the best intentions when working with such a large internal customer base. First one is the my app isn't picking up latest configurations and our first reaction is uh, this is because of bad karma and your app is misbehaving, right? Um, second one uh, is my app isn't connecting to Cassandra and our first reaction is it's because uh, your Cassandra cluster was potentially decommissioned or you misbehaved with the Cassandra team. Um, and then the next instance we see is my app works locally but not on PCF. This is uh, likely because uh, you misbehaved with the PCF team. <laughs> which is us. And then uh, last one we see is, you know, it was working till yesterday and then it stopped working. Um, and this is because we believe that you've not paid the bills for us. All right. So, but jokes aside, guys, this, these are some serious concerns where uh, we classify them as debugging as a service. 
And oftentimes, customers like to start with us because we're very nice to them. Uh, we try to enable them. We try to like make them self-sufficient, but that's not enough. So you need to like provide tools and capabilities, which will also provide guardrails for them to operate within. Um, and that's where a tool like this is going to come. You know, going to be very effective, which is it's going to like um, you know enlighten them as to what they can do to actually validate some of these uh, ops world conditions, right, and help them be more self-sufficient. Perfect. Sounds good. So having said that, um, you know, um, again, uh, the same uh, extending the problem statement, uh, I would like to touch base on the cascading effect, um, popularly a butterfly effect as well, right? So there are two, we all know this, um, what is cascading effect? I just wanted to, I don't want to dig into the more details, but uh, quickly explaining this, we have a concert and a web uh, weather microservices running in our platform. And uh, in this case, weather is dependent on third party. What happens if uh, the third party application, um, you know, goes down? So it totally impacts weather and thus times out concert, right? And uh, it may so happen that, you know, the database also, which is dependent on, uh, which concert is dependent on might go down. So all this put together uh, creates a cascading effect and gives an unfavorable behavior uh, to the experience to the web application running uh, on, on the uh, front end of uh, uh, front end to the client, right? So the client will see experience um, a very unfavorable thing. So zooming in a bit, what happens if these applications are running in a spring cloud kind of an ecosystem? So uh, these are the degos. So imagine that, you know, uh, weather and concert microservices, both are scheduled and running on a, the same Digo cell. Digo cell is virtual machine. So the, both these containers are scheduled to are scheduled and running on on one particular node. So it means uh, uh, what I mean by targeted attack is uh, what hap how about blocking the traffic to the concert? So coming from the go router or the load balancer to the concert service only, and uh, and then blocking the traffic from weather service to the MySQL database. As you can see, weather and concert services both are dependent on MySQL database. So I'm doing a very targeted attack here. Both are running on the same node, but these two apps, I could go and then, you know, uh, do a fine grained um, attacks in a way that, okay, blocking the traffic to the concert and blocking the traffic to uh, database from weather. Again, the failure can again happen at different levels as well. There is a lot of interaction happening here. The weather uh, might lose the connection to the service discovery or circuit breaker. Uh, concert can lose connection from the uh, to the config server as well. All these attacks can be simulated. Right. So how we do that today is uh, CTK uh, CF blocker. Um, that's a new uh, driver that we wrote, and then uh, uh, target specific CF apps application host. So what it does is it discovers where your application is running and then it discovers what services your application is bound to. So in this case, uh, my weather and concert microservice are bound to MySQL database, config server, Eureka service, Eureka and then uh, Hystrix service. And then uh, it can also go into service instance. Like for example, it can uh, the CTK CF blocker can also go into your config server that the app is bound to, uh, and it can bring down the config server as well. So what it does is primarily blocking all traffic to app instances and blocking traffic to bound services as well. So how we do that is again, uh, the next demo for us is, uh, So let me share this screen. So again, we, we are gonna see two scenarios here. The first one is blocking database connection. So I have uh, two apps running in the cloud foundry, Spring Music and Spring Music 2. Uh, as you can see, these two, uh, there are two URLs, routes uh, that's pointed to it. You can go and then uh, check. Uh, hey, Karun? Yeah. Karun and team? Yes. Yeah, sorry guys, Karun, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm gonna stay on the call. I, I have to like uh, dial out of the web meeting. I have to drop my daughter at school, but I'll stay on the call, okay? Okay. So the Spring Music, um, 
uh, so just to see what happened here was uh, the app got loaded and uh, these are the breadcrumbs these are the album information that got loaded from a database so you can see here which database it is it is mysql database called music db uh, so these two apps spring music and spring music 2 both are bound to this music db so now what we're going to do is uh, bring down application connectivity from uh, to music db from for spring music only so again, we have an experiment file here um, with all the attack definitions. And uh, it has got probes. We have used probes in this example. Um, we are going to check for HTTP uh, 200 OK or not for this URL. And, um, and then the method here is uh, blocking a service and unblocking a service. So first, we block the service for 60 seconds. What we, uh, the service that we are going to block is uh, for the app Spring Music and the service name is MusicDB. Uh, and we have to provide some information like org and space name, so which is specific to PCF again. In the on, uh, rollback, unblocking the service, provide org name, space name, and the app name, and then the service to be unblocked. So let's verify again, these two apps are pretty, pretty much working good there's no problem there so let's perform the attack now again it's a python script chaos toolkit and uh, running the experiment it's a block service and there is a verbose uh, you can enable verbose to have a deep dive stack trace information but uh, we will not use that for this demo so what this driver is doing is it is trying to block traffic to music db bound to only spring music app so now it found where the applications are running and uh, it has uh, the app is has three instances so it figured out all the three instances uh, of the app running uh, you know in your cluster and then it started attacking now so you can just refresh as you can see there is a successful attack it there's no data now right again spring music 2 which is running on the same vm and pointing to same database can fetch the data. There's no issue there. But Spring Music, there's no data. So, so that's that, that uh, proves our successful attack. And it takes like 60 seconds to you know bring the system back um, because we have a rollback policy after 60 seconds, right? So, so let's go back and see what's happening. So the rollback unblocking Music DB has kick started. So there you go. You see that Spring Music is back in action. So within that 60 seconds, you can see what happens with your application. That's what is actual goal here. And um, it can be any service now. It's not just MusicDB, but it can be anything, MySQL or Eureka service, Hystrix, all the services that app is bound to. The second scenario is blocking traffic to an app. So again, we are going to use the same um, apps here, Spring Music and Spring Music 2. So what we are going to do is we are going to block traffic to this Spring Music app only. Uh, again, these two apps are running on the same virtual machine. Um, blocking traffic uh, is the experiment file. Let's look at the block traffic JSON file. And um, you can see, uh, again, it's the same, um, you know, similar pattern of uh, definition configuration goes in here, steady state hypothesis. Let me come back to the method here. What we are doing is blocking a traffic to the app Spring Music. There's no service here, that's fine. We don't need to define the service here. We are going, going to block the traffic for 60 seconds or, you know, and then um, uh, the function has unblocked traffic. So blocking all traffic to Spring Music. So it's still working, but uh, let's give it a time. And, uh, and there you go. You see the traffic has been blocked and you see the 502 bad gateway. So the Gateway is aware of the problem uh, route, but it doesn't know how to do a TCP connection to the uh, app. So that's a successful attack for us, right? So, and uh, unblocking is been initiated. So you can see that, you know, unblock happened because there is no timeout for 60 seconds here. So it happened so quickly. So that's uh, that brings down uh, end of uh, the second demo as well. And uh, let me go back to, my other slide i have have like two three slides now that's that's all i have uh, 
So um, I think Ramesh is um, not in the call. Okay, anyway, so this is the upstream contribution we have made. So all the demos that you have seen here, um, they are part of our upstream uh, uh, contribution from the T-Mobile side. Uh, there are two brands. I don't know, I'm here, Karun, if you want it, right. if you have any yeah, questions for me, okay? Can, yeah. can no, you, no, no, you can speak. I'm actually going to be driving, so you can speak for this. Yeah, please. So we have Chaos Toolkit, CF Blocker, um, Driver, and Chaos Toolkit Turbulence. We wanted to uh, bring these two into uh, the Chaos Toolkit uh, uh, umbrella, but uh, that's the effort we are putting in as well. And um, these demo videos are available uh, for you to go through again. And we have raised, again, Turbulence is built by another person um, you know and um, we, we we are not the ones who created turbulence so we, we wanted to um, do a pull request and we did the pull request with all the new feature add-ons uh, and it's pending uh, uh, approval of the PR still um, we'll wait and then see if uh, there is no um, action happening then we wanted to create a new repo on top of it and uh, uh, start adding more features to it so you want to talk about this, Ramesh? This is our team. What do you want to do next and all that, Ramesh? So uh, the next is actually, we wanted to conduct some game days. Game days, uh, uh, we wanted, this is uh, still a dip, uh, slightly matured and proof of concept right now. We wanted to make it work uh, and productize it and uh, call out teams uh, on team to team by team basis and perform game days uh, in a war room and uh, randomly attack uh, our own infrastructure and see how their applications behave. So we wanted to build this capability and give it to the application teams uh, um, to you know, uh, perform chaos engineering attacks on their apps. So that's all I have. Well, thank you very much, Karen and, and Ramesh. It was a really, really sweet demo. <laughs> it was really, really interesting to see. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> I'll carry on on the, on the, you know, on the slides if you don't mind now. Yeah. So if you can share. Should I stop sharing? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. thank you. It was really a very interesting demo, very fun, very fun to watch. All right, uh, I think that's one. All right, so we uh, pass that. Where are we? Nope. Yeah, I think we are back to our you know usual discussion around landscape and you know and and crafting the categories. Um, I personally didn't get any chance to actually look at it yet. So if anyone has, uh, fantastic. Uh, I'll be paying, I see there is a pull request. So I'll be looking at the, the pull request as best as I can. But I think the idea, and we'll be talking about KubeCon in a minute, is probably to have that wrapped up in some fashion enough anyway uh, by, by soon-ish. <laughs> To actually get that, uh, you know, demonstrated at KubeCon and you know, and basically settle uh, in some fashion. So I don't know if anyone has come to that. Maybe on the pull request specifically, but you know, please raise your hand. Happy to, to let you talk about that. Right, I'll carry on. Just just let me know otherwise. Um, so yeah, uh, KubeCon is, uh, I wouldn't say upon us, but certainly not far away. Uh, it's a Christmas, you know, treat almost. And we have, uh, Chris has set up and uh, two, 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 you know, two talks for that. One is the intro of chaos engineering and the other one is deep dive. Uh, the intro is, is certainly talking about the working group, but not only, uh, it works like you presented Karun and Ramesh and, you know, all things that have happened in the field of chaos engineering, you know, Gremlin, Gremlin announcement, recent announcement, uh, all those things need to be, you know, saying basically this is where we at now as a community with uh, chaos engineering. At the deep dive, I think at least I know uh, I and Julian, who presented two weeks ago, uh, will be do doing a demo, a joint demo during that, that one on ECO where it started and and showing how we can actually automate that after that with the chaos toolkit. Uh, please ping uh, Chris if you're interested in talking or being being there or you know in some some capacity, obviously. I'll uh, reach out to him. Yes, please. Uh, I've 
don't reach out to me because I, I don't have any control over that. I'm just passing the message. Uh, yeah, please do, do talk to Chris. He'll be happy about it. All right. Uh, it'd be, it'd be, to be honest, it'd be fantastic if we could see, you know, as many people as we can, not just on screen this time, but, you know, face to face and, you know, just have a coffee or something it would be perfect. So we T-Mobile, uh, we are in Seattle, so, and we are joining KubeCon, so hope to see you guys. There you go. We'll, we'll <laughs> see you there. That definitely fantastic. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is where I'll be leaning on the people who were at, at KiosConf. Uh, I've heard very good things, so I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen to a bit more about it. So who's be will, you know, who would be willing to talk about it, really? I think Michael. Yeah. I don't know if there was anyone else from the group. Um, so KiosConf was um, uh, about a week and a half ago in San Francisco. Uh, we kicked off the day with uh, Colton from Gremlin. Uh, talking about the uh, sort of evolution of actual uh, chaos engineering attacks um, and sort of concluded by talking about Gremlin's new product, uh, Alfie, which is application level fault injection, um, where you can write into your application uh, various attacks, which was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Adrian Cockcroft from... Amazon then spoke about the history of chaos, um, which I really enjoyed. It was a really good talk. Um, we had a number of other presentations um, from, I think the Bloomberg. Uh, we had a great one from Twitter, um, just talking about, um, so one of the, the lady who was presenting was a, a technical diver and she was talking about uh, chaos engineering and um, in team building. Oh, nice. um, uh, later in the afternoon, we had um, Tammy and Anna from Gremlin uh, do a really cool demo of uh, breaking AKS and EKS, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, and we finished the day with uh, Jesse Frizzell, um, who was talking about containers and breaking stuff in containers. So it was a really good day. Sorry. No, no, go on. I was um, just saying nice. <laughs> yeah, it was um, it was uh, a really cool day. Um, good to meet more people in the community, um, and I look forward to next year. Um, and I hear they will may have a new venue, which will be cool. Ah, oh, very cool, exciting. Well, I'll I'll be trying to watch to all the videos online. Uh, it always you know takes time to watch all the the talks, but it's it's really worth it. Yeah, all the videos are online, by the way. That's actually a really good point. Um, I just posted the link. In oh, the all right, thank you. I was just digging it out of my inbox. Um, yeah, so they're all online now if you want to watch. Okay, cool. Uh, I think, I think uh, last time when I clicked on the link, it was uh, dead. So uh, have you posted the link here in the chat window right now? The link to... YouTube uh, link to the uh, Chaos Con talk. It's in the Slack. Maybe I should oh, post it here. Sorry. I'll post it into the chat now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Right, All right. You. Carry on. Um, that was so it. We, yeah. that, that, that's back to the uh, what I was saying about the working group work. Um, I need to pay attention personally to to the state of the PRs and everything. Uh, not just the one I mentioned earlier, but um, the various ones on the on the white paper just try to merge everything into one document and and see where it stands right now probably needs a lot of polishing uh so to, all help is you know obviously welcome uh and that's that's about it for this week you know uh meetup um anyone ask you and I, I think chris usually ends up by saying that we are welcoming any demo and anyone who wants to do a new demo, a better one, you know, whatever. I think it's always cool to have that. So uh, pass along as well to people that aren't aware of this working group. I think it's important to have, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of companies who, do, who are doing chaos engineering or resiliency engineering, whatever you want to call it. And they should come and just show it to us really. All right, um, any questions? Not that I can answer them probably, but <laughs> they'll be there. <laughs> No, that's fine. So this working right. group is, 
Uh, so we are we are uh, late entrants, right, Ramesh and I. And um, uh, what is the expectation? Like, you know, what how, what are the best uh, low hanging fruits that we could grab and then you know start contributing? I think, Good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If anyone wants to respond, I don't want to hold the the old. You know, I'll, I actually I closed down this the sharing the screen so that we can see each other. Um, happy to let anyone answer that one. <laughs> I can go for it. Uh, I think yeah. I think the working group is not yet a working group. That's important to notice. From a CNCF point of view, it's not yet a working group. It needs to be proposed and accepted and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the point of what we're trying to do as a community is, is to bring everyone across and basically work together. Uh, and for that, we try to at least have a white paper. Doesn't have to be complete, you know, comprehensive and the whole model of, you know, uh, got a white paper for chaos engineering, but enough to to showcase what it is and where it goes. Uh, I know Chris is, is is looking at expanding on the landing scape of the CNCF with tools like turbulence could be one for example or some other tools, saying this is a field and you know various technology that exists. So I think right now it's it's more awareness and trying to have that step one uh, to you know to get us. Uh, that trampoline that gets us elsewhere after that. Uh, I have a question, Tiba. Uh, did you have this discussion? Sorry, I didn't come from a while. But did you have this discussion for Chris? What is the next step? Is to transform this kind of um, to a real working group in uh, in uh, CNCF or or uh, what? What is the, the, did you? I think it's important to fix date or milestone because something interesting to fix target, maybe next, maybe not next um, CNCA, but Barcelona or something like that to, to archive something and to deliver something and to go, more, go f further for that. Yeah, Ma have... uh, Mike, Michael uh, did mention that last last time as well. We need ah, to... Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't involve... No, 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 worries, no worries, but uh, it's, a, it's a good point to reiterate. Uh, I think the idea is, I, you know, I, I don't work for the CNCF. I don't know that that proceeds. So I, all I can do is echo what we discussed before. Mm -hmm. But I, as far as I understand, the idea would be to put uh, that work, you know, that uh, GitHub repo in good shape where we, we can, you know, agree on that white paper, at least with, at, you know, phase one, version one. It doesn't have to be yeah. stable or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, increase the landscape so that we have a good overview of what's, what exists. Uh, as a milestone, I think it would be before the end of the year and best would be if we could, you know, do it before KubeCon because during KubeCon, I think Chris is trying to raise more awareness and more, you know, promotion. Involved, and yeah. yeah. So mean, being ready mean, by then would be better. Okay. That means no official deadline. Maybe Chris have better visibility, but the most, the best case is to fix the target to finish the uh, landscape before the end of the year and to motivate to, to grow up to a um, working, real working group for, for the target to um, write specifications. I would say specifications, but uh, write best practice on co engineering, guideline for co engineering for all engineers working in the microservices. I think, I think that's interesting because, uh, as far as I understand, the CNCF tries to, uh, to, um, avoid specification initially. Uh, they don't want to be seen as, you know, a, a governing body in that, in that sense, as I understand it. So yeah. my, my take Best is... Practice probably, or do, uh, something my, else, you understand? My, 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 my assumption here is that we do the tidy up, you know, within like six weeks or something. So that gets ready for, you know, during November. So that at KubeCon, we can meet up and probably discuss about next year. Uh, okay. If we look at what serverless has, has done, it's certainly interesting. I, I was talking about specification. They came up with a specification on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we need a specification or I don't know what we need as a community, but KubeCon and, you know, and other meetups here for those who can't come to MuCon are the good place to say, this is where I would like to go. Mm -hmm. And as a community, we can basically decide that. Um, so it's, it's probably up to us as well to say, um, not just, where are we? But where are, where we want to go? <laughs> I agree. I agree. That me that me the next sense uh, of uh, Seattle is a good place to to discuss about that. Uh, 
Well, every time we meet up uh, in person is probably a good, a good, you know, it's, it's, it's faster, it's more concrete and, you know, it's, it, yeah. it seems to work better, even though we, you know, we all distributed and we all, you know, uh, you know, in places, somehow when we meet up in real person, that seems to be faster. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other question that I can't answer properly, probably. <laughs> All right, uh, I, you know, it's five minutes to, to, to the end, so let's just wrap it up. And thank you very much for, for everything today. And, you know, let's discuss on, on Slack. And thank right. you for managing this Sorry. session, Masiba. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.